Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for this panel discussion on Unreal Estate, Valuing Property in the Metaverse in collaboration with Modus. Uh, I'm Karen Day and today we have three panellists. Nikki Whiteman, the Director of Emerging Trends at Savile, uh, Frank Fritz-Gerald, Founder and CEO of Paxworld and Dan Hughes, the Founder of Alpha Property Insight. We're going to dive straight in um, into this panel discussion where we hope to tease out what the metaverse is going to mean for the property industry. So our very first question really has to be, what is the metaverse? And how would we sum it up very succinctly for our audience? Frank, can I go to you first on that, please? Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously, I've spent the past six years in the metaverse. Uh, when we started our project and, you know, you get a lot of uh, definitions all over the place uh, of, of taking this uh, two dimensional Internet, turning it into a 3D world. And, you know, for the way that we look at the metaverse uh, versus games is uh, quite unique. You know, we think about games where people are going into World of Warcraft or uh, Fortnite and they really have a mission to execute on that game and they meet other people to actually come in. The metaverse for us is the 3D personification of the real world where individuals and communities can get together to actually interact and communicate with each other. Uh, so we think of the, while in the game world, the, the game is primary and the people are secondary, we look at the metaverse as the people are primary and the worlds are almost secondary uh, as an additive experience. Um, and so that's that's how we perceive the internet uh, or the the metaverse, and that could be in 3D VR, it could be in a browser, it could be in a phone uh, at this point in time. But uh, as the future moves on, it will become even more and more into a, a really immersive experience. Great, Nikki, could I ask your view of, of what the metaverse is? Your definition of it? Um, it's, a, it's like a it's an awesome first question because I think we could like spend an hour maybe debating that uh, like we've been telling before and I think um, that there's, there's, there's a lot of debate um, about what the metaverse what it is what it might be what it could be um, I think it's like super interesting that Frank immediately went there into talking about games which I think I'm sure we're going to talk about a lot more um, I mean, I, I feel like definitions range from the next iteration of the internet. Um, the idea of creating, as you know, as Frank has touched on, these kind of immersive virtual worlds. Um, and then also the, the idea of the, I guess, the convergence of the physical and the digital world, which I guess for me is super interesting. So like my role at Savills is to think about this whole future of kind of how we live, work, learn, play. Um, and much of the time I'm thinking about that kind of convergence of physical and digital spaces. Um, so I think, you know, this, this for me is a really, it's, an, it's a super interesting topic because that, that potential that we may see some more convergence, I guess, is, 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 with, is what we're wondering about. Mm -hmm. and, and Dan, what does it mean for you? Uh, yeah, hello. Thank you very much for having me. I, I think it's pretty hard to, to argue with the two descriptions that have gone before. I think I think both have highlighted that that it means some form of 3D world and, and the internet and the next iteration of that. But I also think they both said, which I certainly agree with, is, is there are a lot of different definitions and different people have different views. And I think it's probably often easier to say what isn't the metaverse than, than actually what is. So um, certainly I think it's about a an interactive world as we move forward and we can go into a little bit more detail about what that means perhaps but it's an interactive world um, that we can operate in uh, and how it's going to interact with or not interact with real estate and the, the real world I think is going to be as Nikki was saying a fascinating conversation. Mm. Okay thank you all for that. Um, where do you think real estate fits into the metaverse? Dan can I start with you on that? Yeah, well, I think there are probably quite a few different angles that you can take on that. So, so the first thing is uh, the metaverse as, a, a, as an entity or a place is, is going to be a virtual world that people go and do things in. Um, and these things are going to be done in the virtual world where they would have been done in the real world 
beforehand. Now, that doesn't mean that everything is going to go digital and online in the real world isn't going to exist. They're going to absolutely work together. But I think there are going to be certain tasks that are done in, 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 um, in a virtual way that are already being done in a virtual way. I mean, in, in a very crudest, we're talking, instead of being in a meeting room to record this, we're talking um, on screen. So I think we're just going to see an evolution of people doing more and more things online. And I think tasks and some things are going to be done online more and some will be uh, remain in the, the real world. And I think that means that there's going to be an impact on demand for the real estate uh, in different ways. So people will use their homes to work from more. We've seen that over COVID and, and that's certainly not the metaverse, but I think the metaverse will just extend that. Uh, if you talk about offices, personally, I think the future of offices are really, uh, really bright and important, but it's not going to be where everyone goes five days a week to work. It's where people go to do the things where they need to be in the same place as other people. So interaction with other people, creativity, the, the, the cliche water cooling moments. That's what the future of the office is. So I think, I think having virtual worlds that you can operate in is going to increasingly change the demand for buildings. I also think you can look at it the other way around as well, though, and say that, that the increased use of technology is going to change the role of buildings themselves. So, for example, the number of data centers that exist at its crudest level, there are more and more data centers being created. And if we're moving into this virtual world, whatever that looks like, we're going to need more technology and more data. And those data centers are going to be out there. If people are buying and shopping online more and in a virtual world, they're going to do it, and, but they want things delivered in a physical world, we're going to need more industrial space. So I think that the real world is going to be impacted by this virtual world. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm intentionally using the term virtual world rather than metaverse, because I think the metaverse is a step beyond that, where it becomes a little bit more connected and it, it becomes a, a slightly broader virtual world than just uh, talking on screen or online shopping. But certainly I think this is the first step towards that direction. And I think the trends that we've already seen that are going to be exaggerated and continue over the coming two, five, 10, 20 years. Okay, okay. Nikki, you're, you're, I guess, looking at this for several. So I mean, where do you think, what's your view of where real estate fits into the metaverse at the moment? Well, so I guess, you know, as I, as I said to begin, my, my role focuses on this idea of the, the future of how we will, you know, we'll, we'll work, we'll live, play, learn. Um, and whether you call it the metaverse or, or whether you think about it just in terms of the kinds of technology we think about around the metaverse or technology much more broadly. And I think that's probably important to say that obviously technology across multiple fields is advancing and, and there is this real interplay between different types of technology. Um, but when you think about the development of technology, um, pretty obviously that is having a huge impact already on how, we, how, we, how, we, how we're all living, working, learning, playing. Um, so, so we can kind of we can see that and feel that in our day to day lives. I, I, I think we know that. Um, coming back to the point about uncertainty, I mean, I think it's you know we're we're making best guesses here mm. about what the future looks like. I think that's you know being being honest. I think it's it's hard to to we, we can't say for certain what these things are going to look like. Um, but I think to Dan's earlier points, we can kind of say what some of these things probably aren't going to look like. But we can also say, well, let, well let's, like, let's look at the world that we can see now. And so, you know, Frank touched on the world of games, for example. Um, and we know that within the world of games, that, you know, big global communities come together um, to create these incredible, you know, complex communities of people who are really enthusiastic about a particular kind of game. Um, we can see kind of that you know, music artists will perform kind of in these virtual worlds. We we see this great you know this this collision of great creative spaces between like the fashion industry and the world of games. Um, so we can begin to see. I think this begins to give us some idea mm. about how we're going to see some of this technology play out. And when we begin to think about real estate, I mean certainly if like if you're in the world of retail right now. Um, and you're thinking about retail real estate, I, I would be surprised if this is something that you weren't thinking about, because retail has been a really highly accelerated sector in terms of the interplay with technology generally, and certainly this more these really kind of consumer facing pieces of technology. So I think retail retailers, people in the retail space are going to be thinking about this a lot. Um, Dan's touched already on the world of work and the world of offices. 
Um, I think one of the things that's quite interesting for me when we think about real estate is we often, when we think about work, we think about people working in offices. But actually, you know, I, I was reading something just the other day that was making the really interesting point that in terms of kind of metaverse technology, thinking about kind of manufacturing, thinking about more kind of enterprise models, um, all these various applications, I think, begin to become incredibly interesting when we think about the future world of work. Um, and then, of course, there's the other piece, which, you know, I think people in technology get excited about, which is this idea of kind of transparency and access and democratization when we think about things like education. You know, how does technology make education more ex you know, accessible to people? So I think, you know, like real estate is everywhere. Um, technology is everywhere um it's a super big question so i mean like hopefully they're you know they kick off some you know other useful thoughts okay thanks nikki now frank you're actually designing one of these metaverse worlds aren't you yeah, multiple could, yeah not just yeah. one <laughs> could could you paint us a picture as much as you can of, of what the, the real estate might look in one of those worlds what what it might look like sure um so uh well i i'm going to take a couple of things i'm just going to say here because i got to play off I, I i was being very <laughs> patient not to interrupt everyone because i had so much to say about these things uh which are, are absolutely fantastic so let's let's start with the office spaces uh we've been running a digital office for our teams for almost a year and a half now um and what has been really interesting to see is that we're on this call right now or you're on any zoom call and it's all scheduled and it's all the the scheduling of things and what a 3d environment and when you think about real estate and architecture really provide is that common space area uh where you have these areas where you can just run into someone else and start a conversation in that um, impromptu fashion uh, and I always bring up the one example where we would uh, schedule back-to-back -back meetings of competing vendors uh, so that they would actually bump into each other and see themselves inside the underlying uh, meeting environment, be like, I know them. Um, and it, 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 you know, it creates a new dynamic to what a, a metaverse versus a Zoom call would be or uh, how you set that up. Uh, but going back to the question that you brought up, um, and the difference between physical versus digital real estate, um, it's very interesting. We have a, quite a few people come to us with uh, the ask to do a digital replica uh, of their specific areas. And what you don't realize uh, very often is that uh, digital and replicas don't work in the metaverse very well. Um, avatars need wider doors, you know, so that you can walk by each other in a, in a more easy fashion. You can't slip by someone quite as nicely. Uh, you don't need bathrooms. Uh, you know, we actually had an artist uh, in our PAX world that we're releasing. Uh, an artist was being ironic and built a urinal for our area as one of the art pieces that is going in uh, because it's the thing you do not need in the metaverse. But we still have digital replicas of uh, AutoCADs that basically come through to us and we uh, have to modify them from ceiling heights so that if you go into a third person view or viewing it, you need about twice the space in order for it to not feel cramped. Uh, as you're in these environments, because real world space versus virtual space is very different. And so even architects who are just starting on this, as we're partnering with four major architects in the world that are building our first areas, um, really have to almost learn what that new space is and what that feeling is like inside the digital world. And now you can replicate something similar, but not exact. And of course, with the, the real estate markets, um, it's very interesting because there's so many opportunities from uh, digital real estate agents, uh, you know, uh, selling new buildings to mall systems to uh, all sorts of different areas. And really figuring out how that works inside a digital metaverse space is uh, a, a long learning process and a lot of trial and error to get to where we've gotten to. Okay, thanks for that, Frank. Um, just to kind of throw one in here, um, um, why do you guys think that, that real estate professionals should be interested in the metaverse? There's so many things, isn't there, for a professional to kind of get to grips with. So, so Dan, I'm going to throw this at you. You know, why do you think your average property professional should really be looking into this and understanding it as things are developing? 
So I think there are probably a few different answers to that. So let, so let me come at that from a couple of different angles. But firstly, I just wanted to pick up on Frank's points, which, which I agree with all of those. That there is, of course, if we're talking about virtual real estate, uh, that is by definition an oxymoron. So, so real estate is all about the physical, real, um, limited amount of space assets, and virtual I, is, I is like exactly the idea the of unreal estate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I, um, so unreal estate is, is perhaps what we should call it going forward. But, but they're of course very, very similar in the sense that they're a place that you might go and do stuff, and some's in the real world, some's virtual. But actually, one of the parameters that you make decisions, and if we get onto things like valuation, the way that you value a a building in the middle of London and a virtual building in a in a metaverse is going to be very different because the parameters are very different about that. So I think there's further an interesting debate about there's no question that the world's going to get more more virtual. We can argue about what metaverse does or doesn't mean, but whichever direction we go in, the world is going to be more virtual. It is going to work and has already, as Nikki was saying, had a dramatic impact on the real estate sector, even if that's at the most simplistic level. So, so this is the direction of travel we're going in. So every real estate professional needs to at least have a high level understanding. Personal view is they don't need to know nuts and bolts of it. They don't need to be programmers or coders they don't need to know all the details because there are great people like frank who know that stuff but it is going to impact everything we do so a high level understanding is, is important i think the second part is what is the role of a property professional today so if it's managing a real estate building if it's valuing a real estate building they have that physical process to go and understand it and, and those parameters to go and manage it or to value it both of those functions are going to be needed in the future in other digital worlds. So in the metaverse, you will need someone to manage the space, but the management of that space is going to be very different. You'll need to value that space, but the valuation is going to be very different. And so, so there's going to be an interesting um, uh, two different angles. So one is technology is going to change the real estate person's role today, so they all need to have a basic understanding. There is going to be a new crop of of jobs and careers that come up in this virtual world that the real estate sector is arguably very well placed to do but it will need different skills and need to function in a different way so that is to say that they should all go over to the metaverse and do it but but there is an argument that 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 is an opportunity for the real estate sector to move into as we move into a more digital world okay nikki this must be a conversation that that you're having perhaps within savills you're kind of saying, I'm guessing you're saying to your colleagues, this is why you need to know about this. Yes. So I mean, Savills, Savills have a have a working group um, specifically thinking about this type of technology uh, and what it means to Savills and 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 the broader real estate industry. And that's very much a, a conversation in process. I mean, I mm. think I think it's fair to say that we. I think it's reasonable to say you know we're not concluded on what we think by, by any means and i think pretty much everyone would be in the same space um but i think more broadly than that um the the role and the relationship between technology and real estate is 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 absolutely fundamental now um i think i think that would be pretty broadly agreed agreed upon um and i and i think there are a number of reasons for that um, but, but for me, probably, probably key is the idea that within real estate, increasingly and quite rightly, um, we, we're, we're focusing on consumers and, and use, users, end users of space. Um, that, that's the challenge for anyone who's developing space, investing in space. That's the challenge for, for, for occupiers of space. Mm. To, to create environments that people want to spend time in of, of, of whatever sort. Um, and I think we all know that in, in our day to day lives, for many of us, a more digitized life and technology is, is, is part of how most most of us now live. Um, and so I think the fact that real estate has to you know, catch up a little bit, I think, sometimes with that conversation and understand where consumers are. I think is, is is fundamental and important. So whether we're talking about the metaverse or, or frankly anything else within the technology realm, uh, I don't think it's easy to be re in real estate now and just sort of switch off the idea that you know, like I'm not interested in this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't. I don't really think that's a position that's easy to take anymore, um, because we all have to be interested 
in what is, you know, whether, whether it's in the metaverse, but, but actually technology more fundamentally um, is part of how real estate it, it operates and, and, will, and will be more so in the future, one imagines. Frank, what's your view on, on why a real estate professional should take, be taking interest in keeping a watching brief on this? Well, I, I mean, you know, I think it's especially when you're looking at the real estate markets and uh, on the retailer side specifically, um, yeah, you are you, you've seen it from the 1990s, from what happened in the 80s, the, the digital revolution on uh, just even the listings of real estates. And everyone says, oh, there's never going to be a real estate broker ever again because everyone can just look it up online. And that just wasn't true. Um, what it did was it augmented those things and, and brought them further along inside those um, advertising areas. Um, so maybe someone who could see the listing online didn't normally go and actually be able to, to find that person and, or wouldn't have in the past. Um, and I think it's the ones that embrace that technology uh, that are going to be the ones that are successful. And when we, mm -hmm. we transition that to the metaverse, uh, you could even see that slow transition that happened probably 10 years ago where you started having 3D renders of areas with uh, the 3D cameras. And those listings, basically the ones that basically became more involved with those things. And now I think we're going to go to the metaverse where we have digital replicas of these areas and, and uh, that are being up for sale or apartment buildings or whatnot, um, or even office spaces for that matter, that then allow people to, when they've entered, now instead of them contacting the, the person, we can actually directly connect them with the person who has that listing uh, inside the metaverse. So they can say, hey, three people have joined into that one apartment or that one office, uh, would, you know, you should go in and, and just say hi um, and, and have that natural bump into factor. So I think there's huge opportunities in that space um, that we're, we're currently working on certain development for. Um, and, you know, obviously we, we, we talk through offices, but I, I think there's also a huge um, in the office space areas. We've had discussions with people about where they're building a large building uh, for some conglomerates and in four years it will be done. But giving the opportunity for the people that are going to use those spaces to walk around them now mm -hmm. and maybe even see their colleagues that currently might be halfway around the world before this building is, is finished uh, allows it to see or get a feel for the uh, sense of community in that area, uh, for what those offices and areas look like, and to even be able to know where the cafeteria is before the building's even built. Um, and it, it provides opportunities in interesting ways for people to to really experience the real estate itself. Okay, thanks, Frank. Karen, could I just come back on one of the final thoughts uh, cool. on this, which is we, we've talked about how 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 the metaverse impacts real estate and real estate can move into the, the into the metaverse and so on. Uh, there, there is an interesting challenge in the property market, which is our, our business model. If you look at offices, because we're talking about it, traditionally, years ago, you'd be talking about 25-year leases, and that's rapidly come down. The upcoming sort of the, the talk about flexible spaces, people want to be much more service-oriented, and, and that type of business model is going to mean that the way that we charge people for office use or any other property is going to have to change. Mm. Within the metaverse, it's very hard to charge for that space in the same way because it isn't based on the same premise of finite location and so on. So in the metaverse, there are business models, advertising being the, the most obvious one as well, about commercializing that space. And as, as the strength of the, the real estate, the traditional real estate um, financial model diminishes, we might actually find that some of the financial models and the lessons that are in the metaverse come into the real estate world. So what does that mean? Well, for example, in an office, we will probably continue to charge people, but it's much more likely to be um, uh, service-based. So you charge people for the microservices that they use. You can use data and commercialize that to uh, other ways, especially for advertising. And so actually one other reason about why you should understand this is because it operates in a very, very different way with very different business models. But those business models might be useful or be brought into the real estate world um, anyway, so I think I think just from a pure education point of view, it's well worth uh, understanding and, and being aware mm. of it. Mm. That that brings me on to my um, next question, which is to get into a bit more about the intersections and and how we understand this. This brings me on very nicely. Thanks, Dan. Um, the intersections between the digital, the metaverse, and and the real. Um, 
including enterprise models. I mean, how how is all that going to work? Is do you guys envisage it being like an organic thing, or will it be driven by more things like Pax World? Or you know, I'm kind of trying to get to what the tra trajectory kind of will be. Frank, have you got any views on that? Sure. I mean, um, you know, it's going to be driven by my daughter and my son. <laughs> okay. Um, and and I, I I really that's one of the reasons why we we built Pax World as a, a professional environment to to work, live, and play in. Is my my kids at the moment they they spend hours on Roadblox and Minecraft and in live in these three D worlds. Um, and much like what happened with social media in the you know early 2000s um you know you could go to a marketing manager that would be you know didn't have a social media strategy at the time um and what happened was is the kids that were utilizing social media at the time basically became started moving into the workforce mm -hmm. and it became part of their recruitment process it became part of their um and, you know underlying marketing strategy for their their advertising um, and I think what we're going to see is the demand, uh, in, especially in the, the workforce uh, space, um, to have 3D dimensional or 3D environments to actually work and play in um, and communicate with each other um, and have those experiences. And we'll, we'll be looking at this, you know, in 10 years um uh, of this being an antiquated technology where we're on a 2d screen here with four people on a box um and i think that it's it's very similar to um like my children like or or how i look at when i put my credit card into the internet um so right now if i see a website that looks like it was developed in 1997 i second guess whether or not i'm going to stick my credit card into that website and I think what we're going to see in the very near future is my children in five years, 10 years, are going to look at a website and go, yeah, you know, I don't think I'm going to stick my credit card into that HTML5 website that looks like it's from, you know, 2015. Um, and so it's, it's all consumer psychology that will actually end up driving this in a large way. Okay. Nikki, can, can I talk to you about the the intersections here, how you think these two worlds are going to kind of come together. Excuse my hands, everyone. <laughs> Good hands, like in the hands. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Frank was saying, you know, it's what I was saying, that, that ultimately consumers consumers provide the, the, the answers here and what, what will consumers want to some degree. Um, I mean, I, I think, I mean, I'm just going to, I think one of the really important things to say here is that all conversations about everything right now, uh, and I think absolutely into <laughs> every point of the future that we face, um, come through a lens of the climate emergency. So, you know, I think for most organizations, uh, that is uppermost in mm -hmm. their mind about what, what they're focusing down on right now. Um, and so whether we're thinking about at a consumer level or whether we're thinking about at a, at a policy level or an organizational level, um, one of the important conversations to have here about, about technology is how does technology interrelate to what we're seeing in terms of climate and impact? Um, and I, I think for me, one of, the, one of the questions to be asking here uh, is around the idea of does this make does this make the climate issue better essentially mm. you know, in mm. the most simplistic of terms because i guess as we you know as we, you know i think your you know, broader talks you know that, that your events are really on climate um and i think it is actually this is a really this is a really important conversation within the technology world to what extent whether it's a metaverse or other forms of technology what is the relationship between that and what we're seeing in terms of climate and climate impact because i think if there if there were to be demonstrables about improved climate outcomes that technology delivers then i can imagine that there would be a lot of interest in the space you know and, and those are the kind of questions that we need to be asking ourselves you know what 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 does this mean from an impact level for me and i think that's like fundamental across everything we're going to talk about like right now okay 
Dan, what's your view on, on the intersection? Well, I think I think we've touched on a lot of it already. I think I, mm. I think how it's going to fundamentally uh, age the way that we use buildings as we move into a, a, a more um, uh, in-depth, capable three D world. So um, I think, as Frank was saying earlier, we we, we have it already. We have three D models. We have even if it's just screens like this where it's two D. So so we've already got that. It's going to become more immersive. It's going to become uh, much better to be in for people and I think in particular the next generation of people who are used to going on games and if we just look at COVID an awful lot of people struggle being in, in their properties on their own and gaming was a large part of the community that they had so we have a generation that is much more used to being in a virtual world and whilst the metaverse isn't in itself a, a game or a gaming platform I think people are coming up in that space where uh, completely as we said earlier if, if you as a company you as a building aren't considering those implications then that's going to be a real problem for multi staff especially in the stage where people now want to move quite quickly i do think the plat um, the, the planet and the impact on the, the real world is, is a really important lens that, that everyone's looking through i think that's going to and i hope that's going to continue for a long time mm -hmm. technology has some really really big benefits on the planet and the impact of buildings on it, it makes it more efficient um, it can reduce carbon energy use uh, reduce all sorts of of different things and help us understand it but it also comes with some downsides as well and i think from a real estate side in particular we've got some challenges that we need to face over time so technology uses a lot of energy and if you look at some of the energies that are uh, behind some of the cryptocurrencies for example the energy use there it tends to be very small but across a lot of different places so when you aggregate it up it's hard to measure but it ends up being enormous and so we've got to make sure that we use technology in a, propor a proportionate way to actually add rather than just to hide a problem um, and I think there's also examples out of you know people if we're not that's clearly good for the environment because you don't have the trains running you don't have the electricity going on in the office but actually houses tend to be less efficient offices are still open have the heating and the lighting on and the trains are still running if they're not empty so i think at a, at a real estate or a built environment level we have to have a conversation about what do we mean about all these so we can have a proper conversation about at what point does technology improve the, our impact on the planet and what time does it harm it and that shouldn't always be the only lens we look it through but but it has to be one of the main ones that is considered so i think we have to have a much more mature conversation about what we mean about some of these terms uh, moving forward for us to make the right decisions for consumers and for, for, for the okay well, thanks dan and I, I would love to just comment on the environmental side too because sure. it's a it's a very near and dear to our mm. hearts um and so Real quick on the in the the cryptocurrency, Bitcoin will be the only cryptocurrency in the world that actually causes some real problems uh, in the near future due to proof of stake and the way that stuff's moving forward in that technology. So I'm I'm less concerned on the environmental impact of cryptocurrency in the future. Um, granted, right now it's it uh, that's uh, something that's a problem, but it will be solved so shortly. Um, I, the second thing I would say is on the metaverse. Yeah, you're going to see less office spaces. You're already seeing it right now. Um, shared work spaces that have existed, uh, you know, the ones that, you know, my wife goes to her office, she has to reserve her spot as she's walking in the door. Um, and they've shut down about half of their their offices uh, because it's not necessarily, uh, it's not as necessary in the way that they're doing it. So that does affect the real estate market. What's happening here in Zurich as well is that a lot of those office spaces are being turned into residential spaces mm. uh, because the residential space market has actually changed due to COVID and people working from home and needing more space uh, in their apartments and areas for that. So there's a, a change that happening there. But the last point I wanted to make was there's a lot of things that the metaverse are going to do that affect the real world architecturally, um, uh, both from just being able to interact uh, between the metaverse and the real world, uh, whether that be the placement of screens that show the metaverse world or show the real world uh, with cameras and systems. Uh, there's going to be larger requirements on bandwidth within these office buildings and things in order to support these items because a lot of them can't support it at this point. So there's a lot of effect that will occur in the real estate market in order to uh, accommodate the metaverse and vice versa. Great, thank you Frank. I'm going to switch tack slightly because I do, I do want to touch on how we value 
these assets in the metaverse because it's going to be really different isn't it at the moment it's is this is this building in central london next to a tube station for example that i'm guessing won't count in the metaverse so frank can you give us your view on how 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 do you value i know there's been transactions already people have bought things already in different worlds but but sure. how, how how do you value that there's there's a lot that um that doesn't fit and there's a lot that's exactly the same people like being on water um which is you know and and that's true in the real estate in the the uh, uh virtual real estate market as much as it is in the real world um interestingly enough uh, but there's many other things that, that it's more about your neighbor and who your neighbor is, which is very similar to the real world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you see someone that has uh, set up real estate uh, within these common spaces and they're next to a large conglomerate, um, that that all that space around it becomes very um, uh, larger, uh, much larger in value. What's very interesting is there's two types of metaverse spaces at the moment. There is metaverse spaces that have common neighbor systems uh, like our top level of packed world. And then there is your personalized metaverse, which doesn't have that traffic flow uh, that you get from other areas. So if you just wanna set up your own office and you're just inviting your people or your friends to come through into that office, um, it doesn't necessarily have intrinsic value. Uh, from a land perspective, while in these larger common spaces, it's all directly about your neighbors, what the transportation is, how how does it get there, how close is it to the spawn areas or common spaces, and what that traffic flow looks like. Um, and so in many ways, it's very similar. Um, and in many ways, it's very different depending on the underlying metaverse uh, that is actually being provided the technology. Okay, thanks for that, Frank. Nikki, have you got any views on on how we're going to to value this and then the differences and kind of aligning that? Uh, I guess mainly my view is is that we will need to find mechanisms to create governance structures. Mm. Um, I mean, like this this is I, I wouldn't say this is an area of expertise for me at, at all, um, but I think very broadly. Um, there will be increasing focus down on governance um, and whether that's around values or, or anything else actually um, my, my guess is as this space develops that I mean already, already there's a lot of conversation about that uh, and I can only assume that, that that will continue and intensify. I can see Frank nodding his head. <laughs> I, I have like, you know, 14 pages of governance things that we've gone back and forth on, on what should be allowed, what shouldn't be allowed, how does it vote on, do we do it through the DAO, do we do it through, you know, police structures, voting systems, governments, and everything else. It's It's ridiculous how much time we've spent on that. Okay. Thank you. Dan, do you have any views on, on how we're going to set set property values in the metaverse and also govern some of those transactions? Yeah, I, th I think there are probably, uh, again, a few different angles on this. So, so the first thing is, I think the way that we value a real estate property today in the real world and a digital property is going to be different. Um, absolutely agree with Frank that there's some similarities, but most of the fundamental principles that we value a property on today are just not existing or they're going to be very different in the virtual world. So, for example, um, a lot of the valuation of land or property is based on there being a finite amount of space. A lot of it is based on the location, the vicinity to somewhere else. Now, of course, near the spawn point, for example, is absolutely going to be relevant. There is some similarity there. But but effectively, my house is in a location which has a value because it's it's able to uh, I'm able to get somewhere else. And so so that is only going to have so much implication if we're in a virtual world where you can move to many different places. So it does have a, a an impact, but not in the same way as it does in the real world, where there is that finite space. I think the other thing is that real estate valuations traditionally have been very backward looking and evidence based. The metaverse, mm. by definition, doesn't have hundreds of years of history of values that we can compare it with. And so we're going to have to look in, at doing it in different ways. And, and if you look at RICS, they've changed their guidance to be much more um, DCF focused. So it's much more looking at it as a business. And I think those sort of principles can be and will need to be used much more in the, 
in a virtual world where you can start looking at the potential income. I think the other thing is that that there is always with with the real world or with technology a lot of emotion. Um, and so so emotion does have an impact on some of the values. Now, I think you can start looking at what's in the market. You can look at the cash flows and, and of the real estate property because it's such a big, well-established, historic market. In the virtual world, that's much harder, not because it's not true or it's any different. Apart from it doesn't have that history of data and it doesn't have the scale yet to mean that it's not going to fluctuate. So I think evaluating, evaluating a property in, in a virtual world is going to be much um, much harder to be consistent and, and stable for a while until it gets critical mass. I think that will, will come over time. But there's going to be a, a certainly a period where the, the valuation of a real property and a virtual property is going to be very different with some similarities, but they will come much closer over time. But that isn't just that real estate, uh, the, the, the metaverse um, property is going to become more like real estate. Real estate is going to be a little bit more like metaverse as well. So I think the valuation process today is going to be quite different to those two. And I think we're going to see them coming together. Now, one of the things I would also add on that is, is that most people who are developing and operating in the, uh, in the virtual world are by definition technology people who are brought up in the technology world. Uh, so Frank was saying about 15 pay governance and so on. Real estate, you would have thousands of pages of governance and it will be created yeah. over years and years and years and decades. So we just don't have the culture and the process at the moment to be able to move fast enough to keep up. And so one of the things that we have to do as a real estate sector, and this I would argue is true for, for all data and technology decisions where it impacts it, but we're going to have to change our fundamental processes to not look at making decisions every five to ten years it's going to have to be much quicker, much more iterative. And so we have to have that governance, but in a much more agile way. And that is a fundamental issue for the entire structure of the real estate sector. Because if we want to be moving into the metaverse, we want to be managing the virtual properties, we want to be valuing them, or we want to bring some of those practices into the real world to value the real world buildings, we are simply not set up for it today and we need to change really quickly. And, and the last thing I'll mention too is because we haven't touched on this topic, which is actually probably the most important valuation metric on a, a virtual property is the utility and functionality of that specific world. Um, so is that, you know, can you video chat? Can you, what's the chat functionalities? What are the uh, abilities to modify it and create it in real time? What are the 3D models that can exist? And what is the accessibility for people to actually access that world do they have mm. to have a thousand you know three thousand dollar gaming pc to actually run it or can they just click a link um and what is and, and you know what is that accessibility because that changes the underlying value of the world as well uh just like it does in the real estate market as well but it's just a different functionality type okay thank you for that um going back to to Dan's point about change, and this is going to elicit lots of change. Um, for an individual professional in the market who's you know engaged and interested in this kind of thing, what sort of skills then are they going to need to get their heads around this? What what if you were designing an education program, what would be in uh, what be in that program for a meta um, real estate agent, for example. Nikki, what's your views on that? Uh, well, so I didn't come through, I don't come through an RICS route, you know, so that's, I don't, you know, I don't have a traditional property background. Um, so I'm possibly not the right person to kind of think about, you know, how people traditionally are, are trained. Um, but my sense is, and, and everything that, you know, we've, we've, we've talked about and we're hearing about, is that there is a sort of rapid evolution mm. uh, in the nature of the conversation that's happening within the world of the built environment. Um, and the, the sort of convergence with the conversation about technology is, is, is super obvious. Um, I think, you know, someone said earlier that you're not gonna need a skill set where you, you're gonna be an engineer uh, or a developer. Um, but, but I think being cognizant with technology trends is, 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 already, is already fundamental, um, let, let alone into the future, really. Um, and I think that's, you know, the nature of this kind of conversation is, is demonstrative about that. But, you know, 
but I think that's but that that speaks to real estate more generally. I mean, like you know, we, we do a presentation in our business called the New Language of, of Real Estate. Um, and it's not just about technology. The industry is changing tremendously mm. at, at all levels, and the kind of the kind of, the kind of the language we use, the way we practice, the way we do business is is rapidly evolving. Um, and so, skill sets within the industry, and I think, and the sort of kind of people within the industry, by definition, are changing. Like people like me exist within the industry. Um, so I think, um, you know, it's it's that there's there's a lot of change that's going to happen. Okay. Dan, what, what's your view on the sort of skills that we might be, might be needing? Well, in I, I, think, I think we're such a big, diverse sector that the answer will probably vary depending on who, where and what yeah. they want to do going forward. So I think it's difficult to make some, some generalisations. Having said that, let me make some, some broad brush statements. Um, I think, interestingly, that the world, if we can accept it's going to be more data and technology driven in the future, then, then of course, a base level understanding of that is going to be helpful. So a high level understanding. But interestingly, I think as we move into a more technological world, then actually the human skills are going to become a little bit more um, important. And some of those cultural skills are going to be really important moving forward. So technology generally is really, really good at counting and data and analytics. It can co cope with huge amounts more than, than we can as, as humans. It's not so good at the judgment, creativity, ethics, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So the future of the, the role of, of a property or virtual professional on real estate professional, whatever it is, is going to be a combination of technology and the human skills working together in harmony. Um, and I think that that is going to be the success. So really developing those is going to be important. I would say that there are some cultural um, aspects of real estate that we need to, to challenge as well. Um, we are, by definition, slow moving, low risk, backward looking and evidence based. That isn't a criticism, that's one of our great strengths, that is how we've been brought about and that's exactly the skills that we need and the culture that we need for real estate decisions 99.9% .9 of the time. The challenge is that technology isn't like that, technology is fast moving, it is about failing fast, it is about forward looking. So the real challenge we have is how do we combine those two cultures, bring them together and use them in the right way at the right time. So absolutely, we need to have some data and technology skills, but I think that we need to really develop those human skills, so the ethics, the creativity, and so on. And I think we have to change our culture so we're able to bring together that backward-looking evidence, low-risk culture that you need for buildings, along with that forward-looking, high-risk, um, fail-fast type of culture that technology brings. And that's going to be really difficult. Um, and mm -hmm. I don't think individuals can do that alone. I think that's going to be a mixture of representative organisations and professional bodies. I think governments, I think companies and individuals are all going to have to move to, to change this going forward, which is a big task. But we can absolutely move in that direction uh, quite quickly and, and at least take small steps in that direction. Frank, what's your views on the bringing together of these different cultures? I mean, it goes back to the intersection here, doesn't it, between digital and, and, and in real world in a way? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, there's so much to say on this topic. It's a, and, I, I, and I think Dan was spot on when he says it's, it's going to depend largely on which sector of the real estate market that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I think it's most important uh, for people in, when they're looking in the adoption of the metaverse in some way, uh, it's largely discovery and education. Um, what, what does that mean for your business model? Uh, do you have a business model or are you just saying I want to be in the metaverse to be in the metaverse? Um, you know, is this something that you're using as a, a soft commercial where you're trying to advertise, show space and, and lay that out? Or is it a hard commercial where you're doing a direct sale of something within this space, uh, whether that be rentals or whatnot? Um, and I think uh, educating yourself by entering all sorts of metaverses all over the place and really seeing what the possibilities are today but more importantly almost, what the possibilities are tomorrow so that you are not missing that uh, those opportunities as they come about and being uh, educated and on top of this underlying market at the moment. Because I think there's uh, the hardest part that we have developing Metaverse is choosing the next thing that we actually wanna do because every single person I talk to has another idea about what they can do with the Metaverse. Um, and they're just absolutely endless. And I think 
having a solid uh, understanding of how you'll commercialize it or how you're going to uh, profit from this in some way, whether that's just greater interaction with people or being able to show off your space or be able to advertise or interact with the real world in some way uh, from a remote perspective in a much more engaging fashion. Um, that's the, the education that people really need to take on at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, even just dipping your toe in and then figuring out what the next stuff is because you will have an idea in your head and then you'll go to see what it looks like in a virtual space and it'll be completely different of everything that you want later. So uh, I think that's just the most important thing. Okay, thank you, Frank. Can I now move us on to um, what we think the potential pitfalls might be to this new te technological world? Nikki, have you got any thoughts on there's always two dimensions, isn't there, to new things, the pluses and the minuses. I'm, I guess I'm trying to look at what the challenges and the dangers might be. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I've already, I've already kind of mentioned that to some degree, I, it concerns me that we can become distracted from the fact that literally the planet's on fire. Um, and fundamentally that's really what we all need to be focusing down on right now um so I, I think there's like a big picture question about when we think about technology how we're integrating those those two conversations i think that's incredibly important um and then i think you know there's another huge conversation to have um and this applies in real estate this applies in technology about who's designing it for who Mm. Um, you know, the, the sort of un, you know, the incredibly important question of diversity, inclusion, um, that applies whether we're thinking about a digital world or, or a physical world. Um, and I think as a real estate industry, we're getting better about asking the question about who, who's designing space. Um, and that's, that's fundamental in, in, in my view. And we need to ask exactly the same questions <laughs> when we think about digital space. Um, I, I always encourage people to read Invisible Women, um, which is a book which talks about the sort of relationship between you know, women technology. Um, and I feel like of whatever, you know, whatever lens of diversity you're using, um, that's, that's got to be fundamental and, and a huge pitfall would not would be not having that utmost in your mind when you think about this stuff. Okay. Frank, this goes back to, to something you said um, in a previous conversation that the metaverse is nothing if you don't have everyone. Um, yeah. Is this something then, this kind of mantra, is this something that the real estate industry could actually learn from in a way? Could this be a positive? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, there's a lot of, but uh, it's also just understanding some of the technology that exists out there today uh, that people are utilizing that people need to understand. So we have things called server-side rendering and it costs about a dollar per user per hour and you can get anyone in, into the metaverse really easily, but it's gonna cost the real estate company or whoever's owning this about a dollar per user per hour um, because you're computing this on the server side. Um, I take a different standpoint. Um, I want, uh, we're, we're developing technology that we want to make sure is inclusive for all people of socioeconomic backgrounds, both on the business side and on the consumer side. Um, so we're trying to make a $300 Chromebook run our 28 kilometer space of land. And, you know, we're, we're doing it, which is amazing. Um, and I, I think that's one of the thing, real things that I'm concerned about the most is leaving behind a whole socioeconomic class outside of the metaverse because they can't afford the devices to actually enter it. Um, and uh, that that's something that's going to happen uh, with VR devices currently with uh, some of these systems. Um, and then I think the other thing that is uh, the biggest pitfall that I see out there, especially for businesses as they're, they're looking to enter the metaverse is interoperability. Um, this is an answer that the question that has not been answered to date. 
there's a lot of theory. There's a lot of ideas. I uh, met a really great guy out of Dubai who got his PhD in metaverse interoperability in 2004, if you can imagine that. Uh, wrote his PhD paper on it. And we've had lots of discussions on this. Um, and the problem is, is a lot of the technology doesn't exist today to actually uh, make that occur. So as you're choosing one metaverse versus another, uh, you have to also look at the, and the technology it's based on, is whether or not it's gonna be around in 10 years or will it migrate to something else? Or can I take this 3D model and can I pick it up and stick it in another metaverse? Um, and that's that's extremely important to understand and communicate over time. Uh, so that's that's another major focus for us. Okay, thanks, Mike. Dan, what are your thoughts on potential pitfalls? Well, I, I agree with uh, the ones that have been highlighted before. So, so I'll pick on some slightly different ones. Um, I, I think probably three different things around the metaverse, but really about using technology in the real estate sector more generally, um, wherever that is. So, so one is mental health. So, so we use technology more and more. We're all on the devices and using social media and stuff. And it's pretty well documented that um, that has huge benefits all over the place, but also some mental health challenges. And I, th I think if we encourage people to live in virtual worlds more, or even in the real world, use technology more, we have to at least be aware of some of those challenges, see how we can improve them and make sure we moderate that and um, have some sort of uh, approach to that rather than just uh, imposing it to everyone. I think more and more data being collected again in buildings or online or in a virtual world brings again many benefits, but also some of the privacy risk issues around that are really substantial. Um, and I think that whilst the technology world is, is really moving ahead and, and much further ahead than real estate in terms of data collection, ethics, privacy and so on, actually most of the world and most of the regulators are still behind the cutting edge side of things and so we're going to have to move and be very open-minded and think about privacy issues going forward um, about how do we balance the benefit versus um, the, the data that we're giving up and then the third one i'll pick on is a, is a slightly different risk which is the cyber type of risk so again if you're operating a business in a virtual world or if your building your physical building is becoming much more connected there are a number of different risks that come from um, the cyber threats that could be um, imposed on those. Now, none of those are reasons why we shouldn't move into this new digital world, but all of those are things that we should be absolutely considering. And if I tie in the, the previous points about um, exclusion and diversity and also the planet, along with cyber privacy uh, and mental health, I think all of those need to be considered and we need to do much more to consider those rather than just blindly moving into a much more digital future, which I suspect everyone here agrees is by and large, going to be a much better world, but we have to make sure that we don't make those mistakes, which we all kind of know are things that we need to look at. Okay, thank you. I wanted um, to touch on uh, Nikki's point about climate, but also to kind of reframe that. Um, it could be, you know, what sort of problems could the metaverse help us solve? It could be climate, it could not be climate, but we, we need to kind of focus on that. What other problems in the current real estate sector could the metaverse help us to navigate better, do you think? Dan, I'm gonna go back, come back to you quickly for that one, if that's okay. Well, I, I think if we look at the, the physical world, that then if we look at the future of the office, then I live an hour outside of, of London, I could go into London, I get all sorts of benefits from being in the office, uh, or I could stay at home and I could try and do it virtually. The metaverse is going to be a much more immersive version of that. And whilst I don't think it will necessarily replace home or the office, it will be another tool that we've got to do what Frank was saying earlier, which is have that virtual world, but in a much less scheduled way. So you can have some of the benefits of being in the office in a virtual world. So I think some of the benefits is just flexibility. We're going to get those benefits, but, but today we've either got to stay at home and we have some benefits but lose others, or we go to the office and we lose those. And I think, I think that this verse is going to allow us to have a much more immersive um, approach and get more of those benefits at the same time. I think that will then have a knock-on effect to things like the planet. So um, I still have concerns about the amount of energy that uh, technology generally uses. Whilst it saves a lot of technology, uh, a lot of energy use, it also um, uses it. But generally speaking, if we're not moving around, and we saw this during COVID, that the amount of emissions dropped perhaps not as much as people thought, and we need to make sure we have a system way of measuring it and understanding it. But I think certainly around um, people having to make a decision about where they are to get particular benefits, I think in a more virtual metaverse, they will be able to get more of those benefits in one place at one time. 
And I think there will also then be the knock on effects about the environment. If we have to move around less, if we have to have fewer buildings running, then I think there'll be better impact on the, uh, on the environment as well. Nikki, this was your original point. So can I come to you on what, what other potential problems that the metaverse may solve for us? Um, well, I guess, I suppose, I suppose it, it will depend. Um, I think so much is still unknown uh, mm. about, about what, what it is, what it, what it will be. Um, I think that, I mean, if we, if we think about the, the climate piece, um, I think, you know, so much more work to do to understand actually in actuality the relationship between our behaviours and, and climate and, and impact. Um, but I think, I think what, what's potentially, and I think, I mean, Dan is kind of touching on it, but I think what's potentially quite interesting is this idea of possibly creating a greater inclusivity. Um, I think that, I mean, you know, we, we talked a little bit about games um, and when you see the numbers of people worldwide who, who enjoy playing games, there's something really interesting about that that sort of collectivization of groups of people who really who really love the, the games that, that, that they play um, so the potential to create these these really kind of diverse global populations albeit to you know to, to frank's point that, that assuming that people can afford to participate you know whether 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 hardware particularly is is going to make that possible but I think that, that that idea that you begin to see this kind of community, which, and, and a community so often at the heart of what real estate is about, you know, when we're thinking mm. about physical spaces, most of the time we're not talking about the bricks and mortar, we're talking about the people that use spaces, the consumers, the customers, the people, the, the bricks and mortar is just a sort of conduit for the stuff that happens, you know, the stuff that gets built and created and the great work that happens. Um, so I think, you know, the, the capacity to create alternate spaces, which create global communities, diverse communities where great work happens, great creative things happen. Thank you, Nikki. Frank, I know you've said before there are so many opportunities, so many things, aren't there? So I'm just going to pick one or two here. Okay. Um, and the number one thing is education. Um, and with it, uh, and, and so what do I mean by that? Um, the way I like to explain it is well, I was never a student. Uh, I never really learned a lot from uh, my teachers um, in a classroom. It's just not how I learn. Um, but I learned a lot from the people around me. Um, and when I went to build this initially, I used to go to conferences all the time. I used to speak at the conferences and I never went to the conferences to listen to the speakers. I went there to meet the people that then taught me everything I know. Um, and I could never have that experience uh, attending a webinar like this. Um, you know, I, I, would, uh, I would actually get that experience by bumping into the person next to me and then commenting. Uh, on the people that are speaking uh, and, and engaging in that conversation in a deep level. And that's why I created uh, the system I did. So you can watch speeches and then you can also have the conversation on the side going. And that's where I see real education. Um, and that's where I think we also will provide education at a really deep level to a greater, broader community that gets to, you know, log in from Asia and Africa, South America, United States, all over to create diversity. Um, you know, I, I also talked, uh, I, I read, wrote a paper in college that was talked about technology's role in global peace over time. Uh, you know, whether that's being able to take the horse and buggy to the town next to you and create that relationship, or whether that's the telegraph that uh, allowed you to create these countries in a better way to the telephone, to the internet, to now what we're gonna probably see with the metaverse, that I may be able to go in and meet someone from uh, you know, South America or uh, Africa that I wouldn't have that opportunity to bump into in the first place. Um, and I think that's where we'll, we could create a, a greater uh, acceptance of understanding that we're a global community and these little border things we call countries don't really matter. 
um, and that you know uh, what we're doing in our impacts world as well, even just from an educational standpoint, where we're going to uh, try and raise and lower the water levels based on our carbon emissions. We're talking about being able to plant trees inside the metaverse just to create that educational factor and engagement uh, from a gaming perspective to really uh, uh, help the environment. So, I mean, there, there's so many different opportunities, but I like to roll it all into education uh, is, is the main key. Great, thank you. Sadly, we are now out of time, um, everyone. I want to thank you so much for all your contributions. It's been an utterly fascinating conversation. Thank you all very, very much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks so much, Karen.